Well, uh, let's begin, though, with high-speed rail. The parliamentary bill for Phase 2 from Birmingham to the North comfortably cleared a significant hurdle last week, despite calls by critics, including Staffordshire Conservative MPs Sir Bill Cash and Jeremy Lefroy, for an independent review. With Boris Johnson warning it may be scrapped before Christmas, even Labour MPs who've supported it until now appear to be getting cold feet. Peter Plisner asks if HS2 could be halted in its tracks. Demolition work on the old Metro Camel train works at Washwood Heath in Birmingham. It's coming down to make way for an HS2 train depot. But the big question is, will Boris Johnson demolish the case for HS2 if he becomes Prime Minister? Last year, in his column in the Daily Telegraph, Boris Johnson had a less than positive attitude towards the high-speed rail project. He accused HS2 Limited of having a lackadaisical approach, which he said had led to costs spiralling out of control. Although he didn't say it at the time, it's clear he wanted the project consigned to the scrap heap. Fast forward 10 months and this was Boris Johnson at the first Leadership Hustings event in Birmingham. I have anxieties about the business case for HS2. Uh, I, I think there are, there, are, there are questions, legitimate questions that any incoming Prime Minister would want to uh, satisfy himself about. What I will do is I will have a, uh, a review, but that will not be a review that interrupts the current timetable. We've had the occasional statement from the minister and, I... and Johnson isn't the only one concerned about costs. Last week during a Commons debate on HS2, MPs from all parties complained about a lack of information on the project. What we have not had is an honest assessment of the cost of this project and what we are being asked as a House today is to vote on a figure which I simply do not believe. The current price tag for HS2 stands at around £56 billion, but this Commons Library briefing paper issued last month suggests that the real cost could be around £65 billion. And there are some who say that the cost eventually could rise to over £100 billion. HS2 Limited is currently carrying out its own financial review and will present an updated business case to the government later in the year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now Johnson, whose Uxbridge constituency is affected by HS2, looks set to launch a second review. This project is extremely well established, it's well underway. West Midlands Mayor Andy Street in Birmingham last week addressing some of the 9,000 people already working on HS2. Inevitably, there were questions about what conversations he'd had with Johnson. I've had two conversations directly with Boris, and actually they've both been very good conversations. It would have been in the easiest thing in the world for him to say, as he previously implied, that he would scrap this, but he's not done that. And I take huge encouragement from that. But the man who could be Prime Minister isn't the only senior figure who needs convincing. Liz Truss is one of those tipped to become Chancellor under Boris Johnson. She could hold the government purse strings, but has publicly called for HS2 to be scrapped. And that's music to the ears of those opposed to the project. Liz Truss is one of those politicians who has actually properly understands what's going on. She realises that HS2 is going to be a waste of money and if you want to invest in the region, if you want to deliver those benefits that HS2 is promising, you actually invest in regional transport, not getting more people to London. But the MP, whose constituency includes the new train depot at Washwood Heath, says that jobs it'll create are badly needed. The doll figures across the West Midlands have gone up 25% over the last year, so we desperately need the jobs. If we cancel High Speed 2 now, we risk actually putting the whole Midlands back into recession, just at a time when unemployment is already beginning to spike. Full construction of HS2 can only start once the government has given it notice to proceed. That won't happen now until all the reviews have been completed, probably by the end of the year. Peter Plisner, and uh, we're also joined here today by the infrastructure consultant Michael Bing. His uh, estimate of a total cost of over a £100 billion, nearly twice the official figure, has indeed played a significant part in the renewed speculation surrounding the future of this entire project. And here we've just heard Boris Johnson, whose constituency is affected, 
by this development, quoting that £100 billion figure in a kind of routine way. Y you actually were ridiculed as the prophet of doom at the time you came out with this number. So is it actually now being accorded a level of respectability it doesn't deserve, your number? It appears to be so, especially by politicians of all persuasions and by industry experts, including contractors trying to bid for this job. Does and it really deserve the respectability it's receiving, though? The estimate of cost, mm. certainly. It's, it's prepared on the only industry standard method of measurement valuation for railway engineering construction works. It's been tested on 15 locations up and down HS2 phase one with HS2 and they've never been able to prove it wrong. And you insist it still is the real figure or is it higher? Because officially we're still with that 56 billion including 27 billion for London Birmingham. So what's your latest 106.345 billion right. at fourth quarter 2015 prices and that excludes the traction and the rolling stock. Now Mr Johnson is talking about this possible review when he when and if he becomes prime minister with uh, Douglas Okovy who was a former chairman of HS2 widely tipped to be the man who leads the review. Given his former role with this enterprise isn't it a little bit like sort of marking your own homework? No, I don't think so. I know rather more about what Douglas Oakley had done in the past, what HS2's done in the past. He's probably trying to pick up the papers from where he left off in 2013 to see how we've gone from where we were then to where we are now. We know that HS2 Limiter, Limited are really reviewing in detail the business case, which could lead to them scaling certain things back in order to trim costs, like maybe not going all the way into central London, maybe curtailing the northeastern leg of uh, the northern end of it, short of the major cities of the north, and putting them onto uh, conventional railway lines. Doesn't it then make it more difficult, actually, to make the case for having HS2? It's difficult to make a case for HS2 if you haven't decided what it's supposed to provide. The clue is in the title, High Speed 2. It was originally sold on the basis of journey to speed and time. It's now been advocated as a solution to capacity. The two are actually incompatible. They have to decide what it is they're trying to achieve and work a business case around then. In, in that respect, they should really have done that in 2013, 14, 15. It's a fundamental decision to be taken in creating a business stage rather than spending an awful lot of money to now and then deciding they need a review of what the thing is intended to do. Quick thought, one thing I realize, I believe they're looking into is possibly reducing the speed of the uh, trains in order to cut costs a bit. Is they that are, a feasible look, They are looking at reducing the cost of the speed of trains. I know definitely they're looking at the section between Euston and Old Oak Common because of the tr horrendous engineering difficulties of getting into Euston. And they're also looking at other issues along the route where there are very, very adverse ground conditions which were not foreseen. We heard what Liam Burns said there about jobs and also Maria Makankosis, the chief executive of Midlands Connect said that uh, most Midlands and Northern MPs know that it'll bring desperately needed infrastructure, jobs, release existing rail capacity and rebalance the UK economy. Important priorities. What's your answer to her? I think they are important priorities, but there are ways of obtaining the capacity improvements we required whilst maintaining jobs and employment and the future of this country by working on the existing infrastructure, using some of the works that have already been done on HS2 at Euston and okay. Birmingham to incorporate them into okay. the na network rail system and therefore the jobs and the economy is safeguarded.